Oh, <laughs> I'm moving slow, man. Cardio, but uh, bully rants. I'm here. This, hello, I'm Terrell from D-Line Hall of Fame, and these are bully rants. That was rough. Anyway, this one here is uh, I get a little, a lot of questions about the moves that you should make in your program, how to build a strong program. This is my opinion. I always say that this is my opinion. This is the way I've been done. Uh, and, I, and there are previous rants that I say pretty much the similar thing, but I figure put a new one out. You have to be consistent. Not just consistent in the blood you use, but the type of dogs that you use. Genetics are a funny thing. It's more like analytics. It's all about the, the numbers adding up. You know, the percentage is adding up. If you have, you know, 90% of the dogs in your pedigree have large heads, it's a good chance your litter is going to come out with large heads. You know, that's that the same thing goes with weak rears. If, you know, you have a high percentage of weak rears in your pedigree, there's a good chance you're going to come out with weak rears. Far too often we see people using this term fix. Fixing is not really a smart plan by any stretch of the imagination. You know, you continuously put those same genes back into your dogs. And yeah, you might get a few to come out correct or with bigger rears if that was the problem. But you're still going to have that gene there. And eventually, it, it, you know, you just keep on weakening your gene pool and you never get to the optimum place that you want to be on overall structure because you're sacrificing. As a true breeder, you have to get to a point to where you say, you know what, even though I like you, you're not a breedable dog. You're not going to help my program go to the next level. I'm going to let you go and I'm going to find a better female that has all of the qualities that I want and go from there. You know, we, we get too far into this, oh, you know, Mitch matching dogs to try to, I'm going to get a, you know, a dog with a big chest and a dog with a big rear and put them together and they're going to have a big chest and a big rear. Well, in that same breath, they might have a weak rear and a weak chest. You know, it just depends on how the cookie crumbles, so to speak. You know, you have to be very, very diligent at all times in selecting your dogs. And, you know, sometimes you, you if you're calling yourself a breeder, you're going to take some losses. I've, I've had dogs that I loved, but I just couldn't, you know, they didn't fit in a breeding program. They had too many qualities that I just didn't want, whether it was too much of a uh, pit bull style or if it was, you know, a high rear or whatever. You, you have to let dogs go sometime in order to prove it you know just pet home them and you have to move forward and try to find the answer somewhere else but one thing of reality that I've seen in nearly now 20 years uh, of doing this thing is that good dogs can produce great dogs and great dogs definitely can produce great dogs and good dogs but you rarely have ever seen bad dogs produce a good uh, a great dog Sometimes they'll produce a good dog, but you've rarely seen, I, I just don't, I haven't seen bad dogs produce a great dog. You know, you have to stick to the script and really sort of just, man, have that tunnel vision. Because I, you know, I see the things that go on around the bully community and the, all of the talk and all of that rhetoric that goes on. And most of that stuff is just garbage, man, you know. I'm not even talking about exotics, but I'm talking about dogs that qualify as American bullies. The, 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 the American bully right now is a very, very weak breed. You know, a lot of very front heavy dogs. The rears, you know, I, I, I concur with what a few people say. The rears are just horrible now. You know, the feet are not far behind. Now we're getting into this thing where dogs are having more and more wrinkles and that's not supposed to be a characteristic. You have to stay away from those things if you want to be true to the breed and if your plan is to have a 10, 15 year run at this and have a real sustainable program that identifies with a certain look that, you, that you're aiming for, you'll never get that by constantly moving around and picking. When you see a person that has Dax in their yard and they have Denzel in their yard and they have Miyagi in their yard and they have Kamali in their yard and is they're just looking for names. I'm just going to be real. When you see people pulling in all of this stuff, different styles of dogs, XLs, this, that, they're looking for names. They're not really looking for dogs. You know, they're not looking for a program. They're just looking to say, hey, I got a Kamali, son. You know, 
it's it's sad really but you know the best advice I can give you and like I say I'm pretty sure it's another rant that's very similar to this is stay consistent map out your breedings don't just look at the pedigree but be persistent and try to find out the weaknesses and the strengths in that pedigree and the dogs that were in there and uh, you'll see success good like I say good dogs can can make great dogs bad dogs might make a good dog every now and then but you'll never meet greatness thank you see you on some new shit <laughs>